Pavan has stressed with you in his introductory um, lecture, and the Teeb report very much emphasizes that making decisions about trade-offs about the present versus the future are inherently ethical, and yet they have this economic component in them. Um, and my job today is to uh, hopefully maybe try to, tease, um, try to tease some sense out of that um, in a simple way. Now, the discount rate is a key parameter in the economics of ecosystems and biodiversity. It's a key parameter really in environmental economics and in cost-benefit analysis more generally. Um, maybe we should say that discount rates are key parameters because there's a plurality of discounting. Um, we're going to see that what discount rate one applies depends upon one's, one's moral orientation, and it depends on the specifics of the policy or the project that's under evaluation. But still, discounting is very fundamental. And I want to start out with the observation that when we talk about discounting, we're talking about cash flow analysis. We're using economics language, economics jargon, and we're using concepts from finance. And so we're using a particular kind of narrative framing, which is to think that natural resources, that ecosystems and biodiversity are um, also that they should be managed as forms of, of capital, of natural capital. Now, what is a capital stock? I mean, a capital stock is, is, a, is a stock that generates a flow of services over time. Um, and we can invest in capital stocks and increase the benefits we get in the future. We can liquidate capital uh, stocks, and which maybe we get a short-run benefit from. Um, but that reduces future benefits and future services. Um, and, and so a capital stock then is a store of wealth that provides a flow of services over time. And a utilitarian is going to say, well, we should attach equal weight to the well-being of present persons and future persons. And if we take that argument, that moral premise, we can construct an argument that says that we should be using actually a positive monetary discount rate, but a monetary discount rate that's much lower than 7%. You know? And the reason that we should, that we should, the reason that we might discount future monetary values if we're utilitarians is if we believe that future generations will be better off than we are, so that at the margin, an extra unit of income is less valuable to them than it would be to us the poor and suffering people in, in 2011. So that's one argument. Pinchot is, um, is represented as a utilitarian, but Pinchot's argument was that natural resources are the joint property of present and future generations, and that the present generation has a right to obtain its share of the benefits, but also to sustain the resource and pass the capital stock intact on to future generations. Um, and, in, and that's a framing that says that the present generation has no right to impose uncompensated harms on those that come after us. That that's an invasion of their rights, it's an invasion of their, their human rights, possibly. Um, and, you know, invading people's rights, I mean, we can argue about how much I would need to compensate you if I inflict a harm on you. But your right to be protected from harm isn't grounded in a, in a cost-benefit calculus, actually. It's, uh, rights and, um, rights um, trump economic considerations um, in, in, in legal systems, generally. But really, we're talking about Thomas Jefferson, who wrote that the earth belongs in usufruct to the living, which is a beautiful short piece of text. That's from a letter to James Madison about the public debt. Jefferson wanted there to be constitutional provisions against the accumulation of debt. So, the, the, well, that, 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 that was what he was writing about. But he's using this, uh, this analogy about the earth belonging in usufruct to the living. And what that means is that natural resources, land, forest, ecosystem services, biodiversity, are, are common joint collective property. It's not my property. It's not Kavan's property. It's not your property. It's our property. And the us in this framing, according to Jefferson, isn't just people who are living today, it's members of future generations. The use of high discount rates is appropriate for risky investments that provide gains and losses that accrue to the investor personally. 
you know, so the market rates of return represent personal values or personal preferences about risk and about the timing of, of getting payouts, for example. You know, but conserving ecosystems, conserving biodiversity, it's a precautionary investment. You know, it secures future, it's a means of securing future human flourishing. Um, it's a way of reducing potentially catastrophic, irreversible risks that frankly we don't understand at all well. Um, when we're undertaking, from a finance perspective, when we're undertaking actions or investments that reduce rather than enhance risks, then we use low discount rates. In fact, we might use a discount rate that's even lower than the risk-free risk discount rate, which is already starting out at 1%. Um, 